On the fifth anniversary of his passing, this episode is dedicated to my dad. Sorry I'm late. I just got back from St. Bart's. It was lovely. Rod and I had a great time. Hello, I'm Andrew Shevsik Moonves. Welcome to Big Brother Cheesecake 5 All-Stars. It's day 31 inside the Big Brother Cheesecake house. And this week, Kat is the new head of household. Who will she nominate for eviction? We'll find out tomorrow. And who will win the third Redemple Temple duel of the season? Charlene or Dylan? We'll find out shortly. But first... Uh, 2020 has, is coming to an end, and for most of us, it was a shitty year overall, uh, mostly because of the pandemic. But there were some, some highlights, some good moments. Uh, for instance, Big Brother Cheesecake 4 happened earlier than anticipated because of the pandemic, and I was able to get that cast together in two weeks, which is insane, because seasons 1, 2, and 3, I struggled to get to 16 people. And season four, partially because of the pandemic and because everybody had nothing to do, but also because um, I think once people start playing, they spread the word to their friends and to their friends. And so as each season goes on, it's becoming easier and easier. And I already have quite a few people in mind for season six who have already said yes. So I don't think I'm going to be struggling anymore with casting. And another good thing about 2020 with season four happening early is that we got to start season five, and today is your last day, everyone, to participate in 2020 in the Big Brother Cheesecake 5 group chat, because tomorrow will be 2021, and, well, that'll still count, I guess. I don't know. Uh, what else happened this year that was good? I went to Ashley's wedding, Ashley from season two and four, the mole in season four. She, um... She had, a, she had a great wedding. She It was originally in June, and she postponed it to September, right before the second wave hit. And it was an outdoor wedding in Kingston. Very nice. Um, there's pictures on my Facebook page if you haven't seen it. And um, the food actually was very good. I was, I was quite impressed. Yeah, And yes, I know I I'm, I'm, shouldn't be basing it on the food. I should be basing it on the love and blah, blah, blah. But no, it, I, I liked it. Uh, I even got a shout-out from her dad when he did his speech. I was like, ooh. Uh, and also, thank you, Ashley, for the Arby's gift card that you got me for Christmas. Uh, I love it. Uh, yeah. What else happened? Oh, I hooked up with Brandon from season four. Um, he actually lives really, really close to Aton, like a couple blocks away. Um, and yeah, he's he, yeah he's just gorgeous. And yeah, I I swallowed every drop. Uh, Chantel's like, ah! Uh, yeah. And we then showered together, so it was lovely. Uh, yeah, what else happened? I'm missing something important that happened. Oh, and then of course in terms of orgs, I played in Phil's Facebook Survivor, I played in Dylan's Halloween Mini, I played in Big Noah's Big Brother on Zoom, uh, I played in Padlock 2, which I did terribly in. I did terribly in all of these, but in Ecstasy Survivor... I did finish in third place out of 24 people, which is a pretty big accomplishment, even with that stupid head, Jake, um, who broke my heart. But it is what it is. I think, too, what happened there was he, um, obviously, he knew and he knew the right things to say and whatnot, but my mother was born in September of 1950. Oops, just at her age. Um, and my dad was born the following April. I was born in September of 89, and Jake was born the following April. And I'm, of course, a person with stats and numbers that that's like, that's a sign, right? That it's, that it's you know, something amazing is going to happen. Well, pff, no. Oh, well. Um, yeah, and I think dating this year, I shouldn't be so hard on myself. I always am. But dating this year is tough for everybody. So, I mean, you know, it's... Who knows? Maybe next year. Maybe next year the right guy will come along. There was another guy too, Jason, who I dated earlier this year, and um, 
I liked him too, and he just ghosted me. You know, he made the move to kiss me first. So I'm in Niagara on the Lake with my mother because she loves that place. She loves all the antiques and knickknacks and whatever. I go for the food again because there's an IHOP like 10 minutes away and I love IHOP. That was a downside to 2020. Toronto was supposed to get 20 IHOPs across the GTA this past summer, but because of the pandemic, it's delayed until further notice and probably will never happen. So, uh, but where was I? So yeah, I'm in Niagara on the Lake. He messages me and says, I'm in Niagara on the Lake too, like on Grinder. We go for a walk. He's from there. We go for a walk and he takes me past the cemetery where his mother is buried. He takes me to all like the historic parts of Niagara on the Lake. He like, he, he tells me these in-depth stories, right? Which makes me believe, you know, he's into me. Then we sit down on a park bench. He makes the first move. He kisses me. He gives me his phone number, and then he ghosts me. So, I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, whatever. Uh, but speaking of my dad, so I will, since this episode is dedicated to him. Um, Marson did ask online what I'm going to be buying with the $37 from the, um, uh, from the camera that I didn't want or didn't use and didn't like. Um. My dad, whenever he, he was from Argentina, and whenever he came, went to Argentina to visit, he brought these, um, these I don't even know what they're called. There's these like cookie sandwiches that are called alfajores in, in Spanish. They are basically a chocolate-covered cookie filled with dulce de leche, which is caramel. And now with Amazon, you can order them online from Argentina, and so that's what I'm going to buy. Uh, because it's sent not just because it's food, but because it's sentimental, and uh, yeah, so he, they were his favorite, and I personally love them too. Uh, so yeah, I might leave you one in your mailbox, Marson. Um, yeah. Uh, what, so what was I going to say though about that? Oh, so another thing that I thought about Jake and this year in general was my mom met my mom married my dad when she was thirty three, and they met when she was thirty one. So being 31 now, I'm like, this is like the year, this is when it should happen for me, right? So, um, but yeah, it's a different era too, and I get it. But my dad had to work hard to win over my mom, because my mom was not attracted to my dad at first. Um, and I get it. I mean, sorry. I, <laughs> oops! Um, my, dad, uh, my dad is a wonderful man, loved me very much, I have nothing but good things to say about him, but... I, I see, when I look at pictures of him when he was young, I'm like, mm, mm. Whereas my uncle, there's a picture of my uncle. Next time I'm at his place, I'll take a picture of it. He was, he was good looking when he was young. And my uncle used to say that, my uncle was a doctor, and he used to say that all of his patients, all of his female patients would hit on him. And he'd be like, that's where I got the line of, honey, I like my vaginas in the back. Got it from him. Anyway, uh, what was I going to say? So yeah, so my dad had to work hard on my mom. He had to woo her over with flowers and this and that. And he lost 100 pounds back then. And I lost 60 pounds back when I was in high school. And she still was like, uh. And her friend, Gunta, who some of you know of, um, was like, Christine, they're not all going to be Robert Redford. You got to just, you got to give him a chance, Christine. So she finally gave him a chance, and at one point, she pro he proposed, and she said no. So then he went away for a few months, and then he started wooing her again. And what's funny is my grandfather on my dad's side, I'm going way over with time, uh, my grandfather on my dad's side owned a restaurant by Bloor and Bathurst, which is now a Popeye's, in case you're familiar with the area. And it was a Hungarian restaurant, and there's still one Hungarian restaurant in that area called Country Style, I believe. Um, good pancakes. Um, and so I can just picture this whole sort of like friends type thing where this restaurant, this family restaurant is where like my mom and dad used to like hang out, right? And all, all of their friends used to work at the restaurant. Um, but yeah, so finally, finally she was allegedly falling in love. And when my dad proposed, she emphatically said, sure. Oh boy. Yeah, so last thing about that, um, my dad at first wasn't great about my sexuality, but he definitely came around, and towards the end, he was 
trying to, you know, help me find a, a boy. And he had a close friend who had a son who I met, who I was always into. And he was like, definitely gay. Like he was like Ross Matthews, Carson Kressley. Like you can't mistake it. He was gay. Um, and I was always into him. Uh, and I probably would have made a move by now, but he moved to Kuala Lumpur. Like, could you not go further away? But my dad, when he was in the hospital, spoke to his friend and said, you know, maybe, maybe after I pass, if, should I say the name? Oh, whatever. Who, who the hell watches this anyway? Maybe if Morgan ever comes home from Kuala Lumpur, maybe he and Andrew would be good together. And the, the his friend was just sort of, was just sort of changed the subject and brushed it off. So, and I remember my dad telling me I was kind of that he was disappointed in that because it's a sign of this person who is very liberal, extremely liberal, votes NDP or Green every time sort of didn't acknowledge um, his son's own sexuality, which was clearly insanely obvious, and it is what it is. And my mother also has a friend, I'm not going to say her name, but she's very old, and she's very British, and she has a son who's very obviously gay. I probably, really should, probably shouldn't be saying this, but she too just won't acknowledge it. Like, my mother brought it up once, and she was like, Christine, how dare you speak of this in front of me? I'm like, okay. So it sucks. I can't wait for the day when there's no such thing as a closet. I don't think it'll be in my lifetime, but it'll be nice if one day an 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old realizes they're gay and just, and it's not even a thing. He just is like, oh, I'm gay. Okay. Let me just tell people like the end. And there is no closet, but who knows? If you watch the show Million Little Pieces, the young kid in there is gay and he came out pretty easily. So maybe there's hope. Hollywood accepts it. Well, anyway. I don't know where I got off on this tangent. Um, yeah, so I think it's time now to move on. Oh, Kat's uh, HOH letter will be in tomorrow's episode. My thoughts on reality realness will be on Saturday's episode. I only got a chance to watch five minutes while I pulled the bus over and it was going live. And Dylan was just going on and on and on complaining about things. And Nick and Lindsay are sitting there going, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then what happened? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, yeah, it reminds me of when Rai Rai was on last season and Chantel couldn't get a word in. <laughs> Rai Rai just kept going and going and going. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so let's get on now to, I think I got through everything, to the Redemple Temple duel. So, Dylan is the most recently evicted house guest. He will face off against Charlene in Redemple Temple duel number three, where the winner will be just two duels away from re-entering the game and the loser is permanently evicted. The remaining categories were Big Brother Cheesecake 1, 2, and all about Andrew Shevsik Moonves. Dylan cannot pick from his own season, uh, unless both of the house guests are from the same season. Uh, so Dylan selected all about Andrew Shevsik Moonves. So, is everybody ready? Then let's begin. Dylan, please select a dollar amount. I'll do $400. Andrew Shevsik Moonves is this sign of the zodiac. Dylan, what is a Virgo? Correct, Dylan, you're up to $400. Select again. I'll go for $600. Contrary to popular belief, this is the acronym Andrew Shevsik Moonves uses for Big Brother Cheesecake. Doot, doot, doot. The correct response, what is BBH? because BBC is Canada, and BBC is the British Broadcasting Corporation, so I use the second letter, BBH. Dylan, you still lead, 400 to zero, select again. I'll go 800, Alex. That's rude, because he's passed, rest in peace, Alex. That's another thing, we lost a lot of game show hosts and celebrities, Sean Connery, Regis Philbin, Alex Trebek, uh, lots of people kicking the bucket, it's very sad. Andrew Shevsik Moonves is a proud graduate of this high school. Response must be an exact match to what was said in episodes. The correct response, what is St. Michael's College School for Demented Sex Perverts? Dylan, $200. Much to the dismay of the other seasons, Andrew Shevsik Moonves has repeatedly declared this season of Big Brother Cheesecake to be his favorite. Dylan, right after said what uh, after the buzzer said what is season two, and that was correct. 
So Dylan, $400, Charlene, zero, with the $1,000 question left. Here we go. From season four to season eight of Big Brother Canada, Andrew Shevsen-Moonves has attended open casting calls to be on the show in this city. The correct answer, what is Montreal? That ends the duel, which means Dylan, congratulations with $400. You have won the duel and you will stay on Redemple Temple to await the next house guest. Charlene, as it is written, so it shall be done. You will always be an all-star. For now, sachet away. Will Cat nominate for eviction? Find out tomorrow. And we'll pick players for the Golden Power Veto competition using the veto wheel since we have 12 house guests in the game. And Saturday is the rules to an all new Golden Power Veto competition, which will also be the second of five veto competitions where you can use your all star dollars to buy advantages. And I will have my thoughts on reality and realness. Sunday is the Golden Power Veto results. Monday, the Golden Power Veto Ceremony. Tuesday, the final two nominees play their case. And Wednesday is the next live eviction and head of household competition where another house guest will be evicted from the Big Brother Cheesecake Five house and will join Dylan in Redemple Temple where one will stay and one will go. I'm Andrew Chefs of Moonves. Take care and remember, a win is not necessarily victory and a loss is not necessarily defeat. Good night and Happy New Year.